The next speaker is Jacob Hacker, who's a Stanley Reeser professor at Yale University in political science. He is arguably the most prolific political scientist working in healthcare right now. He has written numerous articles and books, and those books have been a, won a number of notable awards. But what really brings him to the stage today is that he is arguably the largest proponent, if not the architect, of the public plan. And so, uh, as uh, Hank has already foreshadowed, we might get to hear a little bit about that. Jacob? So let's, let's remember for a moment why we're having this debate. I, I am going to cite two sets of statistics that both emerge out of the Harvard Medical School, Harvard School of Public Health complex. Uh, one is that about three in five bankruptcies in the United States uh, are due in part to medical costs and crises. Um, there's another study by a Harvard uh, scholar, but not here, uh, who, that shows that about half of foreclosures are also uh, due to uh, medical costs and debt. And just recently, uh, a uh, study was done here that suggests that perhaps as many as 45,000 unnecessary deaths in the United States uh, are due to lack of universal health insurance. So we're not just talking about a, a dollar and cents in financial uh, risk issue, we're talking about a life and death issue. Um, and that goes well beyond uh, those who are uninsured to the millions of Americans like the, most of the three in five who declare bankruptcy, one, one family, one household every 15 seconds, uh, who have insurance but who don't have adequate protection. And then with that unhappy story, I want to turn to a, I think, a happy report. I just got back from Washington, and a lot is happening there. Um, in fact, uh, for the first time uh, in the history of comprehensive reform debates, uh, we have complete legislation that has been reported out of committees in the House uh, and in one committee in the Senate, and there's markup taking place, as you know, right now uh, on another bill uh, from the Senate Finance Committee. So we are at a point, I think, a fateful moment in the debate. The architects of this effort have taken three broad lessons uh, out of the failure of health care reform in the early 1990s. Um, with apologies to James Carville, I've, I've summed these up in a piece in another journal of health policy as it's the politics stupid, don't forget fear, and change politics versus more of the same. So the first lesson, it's the politics stupid. Uh, the best laid plans are no good if you cannot get majority support for them or even 60 votes in the Senate. Uh, I think that lesson is learned uh, pretty beautifully. Um, the plans that have been put out are not pretty. They are meant to pass. And, uh, and I think that's why we're at a point where we can actually talk realistically about their passage, though I share uh, Hank's concerns about the financing side of the picture and many others as well. The second lesson that I mentioned was don't forget about fear. The fear of those who have coverage today uh, fewer than in the past, but still the substantial majority of Americans that reform will undermine the quality or the co or raise the cost of their coverage, the fear of government and taxes that is very much a part of our discourse. I'm not so sure that that lesson was learned quite as well as it should have been. If you uh, have been following the discussion, it looks as if uh, fear of government and fear of uh, the negative effects of reform on people's uh, care, including those who already enjoy government, uh, sponsored health insurance in the form of Medicare have been rampant, uh, have been fed by misinformation, and have had, I think, a big effect on the tenor of the debate uh, and the urgency with which uh, President Obama is now seeking a deal, even if it is, falls well short of his original aspirations. Now, to my mind, there are two ways in which we can respond to the fear that has been a part of this debate. One is to fight fear with fear, to talk about the risks that Americans are facing today and the risks if we don't act. And that's certainly something the advocates of reform have done. The other side of that, of the equation, is to fight fear with hope, to talk about the vision of reform and a reform system that could actually uh, bring us to a better, higher ground. I have to say that it's there that I think that the effort has been most uh, anemic so far. I mean, the, the plans are, are not just complex, but they kind of, they're, they're lacking a kind of underlying articulated vision that President Obama and congressional leaders have been able to bring out and use uh, to try to bring uh, Americans along with them. I think it's quite remarkable in many ways uh, how uh, well uh, 
the, the things are going right now, uh, given how poorly many aspects of this larger campaign of talking about and discussing the issue has been managed. 